Radio Off Planet TV. I'm Emily Moyer, and I'm very excited for today is part four in our Sacred Geometry series with the Creamies. Before we get started, I just want to uh, apologize in advance that I don't have all my files well organized. So when we're doing some screen share, I might have to do some moving around. I can't figure out how to have all the windows open with the things I need and then correctly for me to be able to find them easily. So I apologize in advance for that. But without any further ado. Chris and Steve Creamy, welcome back to Off Planet Radio. What's going on? Oh, thank, thank you. you Hello, good to see you. Good to be back and uh, back and doing this What's again. What's going on is that it's getting dark early. It's we're almost at solstice. Yeah, it's it, the, the name of this. The, the 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 name of this one is how do you say it correctly? The Vatsu. Vastu Purusha. Vastu Purusha. Vastu Purusha. So, okay, this is Sacred Geometry Part 4, Vastu Purusha. Okay. okay, yes, it is getting dark early. It's uh, like when I was back east in Boston just a few, like a few weeks ago, I couldn't believe it's like 4 o'clock and pitch right. black outside. I yeah. hate it. And we're lucky. We're, it takes us a little longer, so it's like 5 here. And yeah. It starts to get dark, but it's cloudy today. So. It's, that's the same as here. It gets dark at about 5, but I don't. that's just not enough daylight. You know, I just found out this morning... Uh, that one of the a few that I was listening to a video about Andrew Yang, who I have, I mostly don't care for, but I, I, I appreciate anything that is outside of the, the range of the normally accepted politician. You know, I think there may be some Trojan horse action going on with him and whatever, but uh, I just found out today that one of his policy proposals, apparently he has a lot of policy proposals detailed on his website that never get talked about and that I didn't know about, but one of his proposals is to not f screw with the daylight saving times. Oh, keep us on daylight saving time and i'm like jesus that one might that would if there was ever anything that might get me to vote again i'm not going to vote again <laughs> it, it, nothing would but if one thing were going to be it it might be that <laughs> well, i remember that that actually happened in high school under carter during the uh, the fictitious gas crisis when oh. the oil companies were were, were dumping uh, truckloads of oil in the in the, in the desert, desert nevada right? um this was even on uh, <laughs> You know, on actual news, uh, but anyway, uh, so so because of this uh, so-called crisis, and it was actually kind of amusing because my father had a gas station in Brooklyn at the time. Yeah, and, um, there were the lines, and my cousin worked there, and he said he made a mint, you know, <laughs> selling gas on the on awesome. the slide. But um, so, but Carter canceled daylight savings time. I don't know if it was one or two years, and I do remember being at the school bus stop as like a sophomore or something. Uh, you know, so when he talk. canceled when he canceled it, did they stay on the light longer schedule or the light? It stayed the, on standard time. Right, stayed on standard time. So it, it which would is be, not daylight saving. So uh, the day was still short. The day, oh, yeah. the well, daylight is no matter what you it's do. It's not going to change the number of hours. It's just then they went back. In my recollection, was that. People were upset because their children were at the bus stop in the dark in the morning. Right. Okay, so that's what, so he chose the, the so he he didn't do daylight savings, he did the other, he canceled it. Right, he canceled daylight savings. And just stayed on standard. Okay, so I think what Andrew Yang is saying is the opposite, that it would be I daylight savings right. time all the time. So oh, I So we would have longer, so it would get dark later. Well, for me, I like to have the day, I, I, my favorite is when it's still light at 9 o'clock at night. I know. I know. I know. I yeah. Know. And, and the and and the other end, it may, you can sleep late. <laughs> <It's day -time>. <laughs> <laughs> My body just naturally wakes up pretty early anyway. Mm -hmm. I like the extended daylight. I like being able to go for my run at seven o'clock at night, you know, and oh, nice. and enjoy light the whole time. <laughs> or just get the yeah. dusk at the yeah. very end. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, and just thinking, you know, just thinking that whole thing with with uh, Jimmy Carter, and they also reduced the speed limit country uh, wide to fifty five miles an hour. Right. So when I got my driver's license. Theoretically, I could only go 55, and I started accumulating tickets in a hurry. So can, why, what do you, uh, I think I understand the connection between the lowering the speed limit and the gas crisis. Well, this, but is pre, this, is, you know, this is presaging, you know, this sort of Green New Deal economizing on everything, you know. Right, but what would be the purpose of canceling daylight savings time? How would that help with... 
uh, the gas crisis. Oh, with, um, with, with keeping uh, buildings, uh, it had something to do with like cities, keeping their buildings heated oh. longer oh, and things okay. like that. And you know, uh, that sort of thing. Gotcha. So they wanted people oh, out yeah. of the public. Because there was one year mm -hmm. where nobody had Christmas lights on. It was a dark Christmas. So, it, it, okay, so that, so it's the rationing, rationing of electrical power and gas. Sorry, I got it. So it is, it, that is the precursor of the Green New Deal and yeah. all of that. And so you guys, th this is why we like to have ongoing series with the creamies. It's nice to talk about the sacred geometry, but they have all of these little stories. <laughs> yeah. Gas crisis, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, be, well, we'll be in the old uh, malcontents home at, uh, in 20 years. Well, but, they, but there's not, you know, so like there's not very many people who know the stories from times past, but also have kept current on what's going on now and the current take on the conspiracies or the current takes on what's happening with tech. There's very few people that have uh, knowledge on both ends. Right, it's like fortunate that people get stuck and they don't yeah. want to stay current and fresh and and they concretize and and crystallize and they don't remain flexible as far yeah. as changing what yeah. your belief system is, changing what you believe to be true, because they identify with their thoughts. Yeah, totally. About what the world is and who's what and what they are. Yeah. And then when it comes time to really be nimble, yeah. they're not. And yeah. That's very disconcerting and, and for being, us. And it's being taken advantage by them. Before. Totally. Well, like you have, like, for example, like my father, who I love very much with much at this point, disagree on almost everything with like his, his, what he, he, you know, he's a very smart guy, right? He has a huge knowledge base, but at a certain point he stopped extending his thinking to include the way things that presented themselves one way in the past would now present themselves. So he can get his head around the idea. He not only can he get his head around the idea, he's willing to entertain and accept the possibility that like there was funny business with the Kennedy assassination. Right. But when he hears me talk about 9-11 or the Sandy Hook or the Boston bombing or some of these shoes. He can't understand that like this is the logical extension with today's uh, kinds of communications and technology and all that kind of stuff that like, this is it's, it's the same kind of operation just updated, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and the same um, powers that shouldn't be 40, 50, 60 more years advanced in their ability to do and their awareness of what works and how to do these things. And, and, and so you guys have continued to stretch your brains in all direction. Like my father continued to stretch his brain only in one direction. And that's like, or maybe two, maybe like left-leaning politics on a certain level and ethnic art, right? And everything else. What happens mm -hmm. is, and I got, I, this really hit home when I was listening to Max Spears talk. Mm -hmm. He was killed. Mm -hmm. He said, they want to break your heart. Mm-hmm. And I believe that that could be at the crux of it. Mm -hmm. that people's hearts cannot comprehend that some other human being would act in, in such a way. Right. And because they wouldn't do that, they can't comprehend that our government would do that or, or yeah. some you know, ultra outside the government action right and then the thing that's even harder and this is the one that sometimes i i don't you know this is one of the hardest ones when you're talking about something like a fake school shooting right or, or whatever right. like it seems like you're, you're saying on a certain level that the lies and the deception have gone gotten worse but the people actually didn't die and so there should be some level of good news in that that like okay maybe the government or the powers that be that, or shouldn't be, have figured out that when you kill people, it really pisses off family members and they won't give up the fight. So they've found this tactic of, of, you know, and I'm not saying that all of these things are that, but there's certainly an element of that at play, right? So I find myself in this situation arguing with someone who thinks it would be better if all the people were dead. Right, like not better, but be like more honest. Right, right, right. it would be more honest. Right, or, or no, or they would prefer the idea that they, they don't like the idea that I'm suggesting. There's a hoax. They, if it had, if something happened, they're more comfortable with the idea that people really did die. 
this is it, this gets very complicated because yeah, there's all sorts of reverse psychology and whatnot so the good news you know like the good news is is that less maybe less people die in these things than used to the bad news is is people's bullshit detectors don't work anymore and that's being used yeah. against them right yeah. so and that's something that can be corrected you can't resurrect somebody from the dead you can resurrect your own lens of re re reality perception you know right. so so the example so, that would be the Jersey girls after 9-11, the wives of, of, of people who right. died 9-11, who didn't give up and, you know, who go to con congressional offices and these guys, you know... They're pains in the asses. They they're like, we don't want any more of that. Hide. They hide behind the doors. They're, 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 they're just, they're just they, scared shitless of anything real. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. Anything real. Yeah. So I, I, um, honor, I, I honor you for, you, you know, continuing to extend the stretch of your mind in every direction. Our silly putty brains. Right? Yeah, yeah, well, and I think our most recent thing is, at least for me, is that I had to come to the point where I had to admit that I have been wrong about things. That I was mm -hmm. dead sure that I, mm -hmm. was right. I, I love to be right, and doesn't everybody? Mm -hmm. And you know, would spout all. Oh, are you things. Jewish too? Are you Jewish too? I know, I'm Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Sagittarian. And Polish, right? Oh, and Sagittarian, there you go. I'm a Sagittarian. But um, I had to realize, I think it was with the election, everything changed for me. That I had to realize that I'm not always right, I have mm -hmm. been wrong. I have closed out other people's ideas because I was so convinced I was right. Mm -hmm. And so I, it's humbling mm -hmm. to do that, but it feels good. It doesn't hurt. It's not uncomfortable. It feels like, yeah, I was wrong. Well, it's almost it, it's almost relief. Like when I used to be right about when I was back when I was right about everything, I was miserable. And now I'm not right about everything, but everything is lighter and more fun, and I laugh, and and and, uh -huh. and I, I, I don't, I don't, not everything is so life or death or serious. Take you know, taking everything so seriously or whatever. There's a lot more room for you know variation in how you feel about something. Yeah, right. and I was arrogant in my ignorance. I have to myself. That. Yeah, I know. I have to admit that. Yeah, well, myself as well. well. Well, you, I know you've, you've, you've uh, said you've done some reading with the Bhagavad Gita, and there's a line, there's a, uh, one of the part in the second chapter, and it really delineates this process, and uh, oh. I don't have to be going from memory here, but it says, when you dwell upon objects of sense, and objects of sense in this case being ideas, mm -hmm. attachment is born. So just the dwelling is the attachment. Mm -hmm. From that attachment uh, follows all anger. sorts of anger when it gets challenged, and, and because your ego becomes uh, becomes one with it, really in a way, mm -hmm. you have your ideas. Your ideas aren't even your own; they're just mm -hmm. your ideas, right? Yeah. And, and the attachment is born, then anger, and then from anger follows delusion, and from delusion, loss of men memory, mm -hmm. memory of who you are, really. Yeah. And then from that loss of memory. <laughs> you're, you're gone. Death. You're shot. Death. He perished. Yeah. So that's in the second, um, the second book of the Bhagavad Gita. It's really brilliant and just it just encapsulates that, that whole process. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, uh, the Bhagavad Gita is great. It's rich in so many ways, and I've been, probably enjoyed that more than any other sort of, you know, yeah. scripture or religious or that kind of text that I've ever read. Mm -hmm. there, the other one that's in the other, and I, I can't quote anything or remember which book it's from, but that whole section where um Ar arjuna sees the content of his own you know, krishna scares him Chapter right 11, by yeah. showing him all the monstrosities right. and whatever yeah. and then basically says this all is your own mind this is all this is all you every all of this is you and that's true and i think in some ways that's really deep down in a way that they that most people have no connection or, or awareness of that's what really scares people about the truth, right, is that like, how could people do this stuff? Could I do this stuff, right? And, and the fact of the matter is, is that with the way this place works and the reincarnation cycles and the machine, the soul recycling machine and stuff, the likely fact is at some point we probably all have done these things, That's right? right? And I think of it. 
and are capable of it. We all have, you know, uh, Mother Teresa and us and Hitler and us, right? Like those possibilities exist in all of us and likely were expressed at some point on the reincarnation wheel of our, of our many existences. And I think that's what it is more than anything. It's not that there would be somebody that could do such a terrible thing, but that you could possibly be a somebody like that somebody. That's a good takeaway. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's a good takeaway. Yeah. So... All right, now that, now that we've had our wisdom lesson from the well, creamies. Well, it, kind of it kind of segues because, <laughs> um, all right, so the drawing we're going to do today is called the Vastu Purusha. Now, Purusha. But wait, we have to, give, we have to open oh, okay. with, our, with our mantra open, is, right. may we be guided by truth, may beauty be revealed to us, because it is a revelation, mm -hmm. and may it result in the good, and that's always capitalized. And... Today is December 16th. We actually did this drawing on the 10th because we thought we were going to go in that day. So I was, I was sick, though. Emily had, to, Emily had to call in sick. So, yes. She had a sick day. <laughs> this is the Devanagari in Sanskrit. So Devanagari is the lettering for Sanskrit, and it means city of the gods. So Deva, Devi. Okay. The gods. And Nagari is the city. So. And it's always hanging from a thread or sutra. A sutra. A sutra, yeah. which means thread like suture. Yeah, okay. And so, so and it, they're always hanging because it's to represent the unity of, of all of it. And these are various expressions. The letters are various expressions. It's like a charm bracelet kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Big charm. Yeah. I always, whenever you read your meditate, your, your mantra before we start, I always, I have this book, I have to find it. And I, I bought it at a book, like a store, like a used bookstore right out near Harvard. And the book was called Why Beauty is Truth. And every time you say that, I'm like, I have to find that book and actually read it. I have it in my collection yeah. somewhere. Right, yeah. right. That's um, Keats, right? John Keats. Poem. Uh, maybe, yeah. Because beauty, beauty is truth. That's yeah. All you need to know, something like that. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it, it sets um, and that's Plato. It sets the tone for the work, so it, it brings it brings you out from busy, busy thoughts into focus and concentration. So, quick overview of the drawing is that we're going to do a quatrefoil, and from that quatrefoil, we're going to make a nine, a box of nine, which is also, as we will hopefully we'll discuss in the second part, um, the the square of Saturn. And, and the numbers that go in there, and there's some interesting gematria that comes out of that. But in, in India, the Vastu Purusha is their, um, their version of feng shui. So this is their box, and we'll, and we'll show later how, how, uh, how this uh, represents your house. And then okay. the Purusha, who is the cosmic human, this is the Vedic Purusha, which is a little different from the Purusha that's in the Bhagavad Gita. So this is the Purusha of the Vedas. Um, it was very old and, um, you know, the Vedas, and, and, I, and I have a translation of it that I can read just a couple of lines from when we get to it to express who the Purusha is, but the Purusha is our experience. I mean, this is what all of Indian philosophy is about, the Bhagavad Gita, all of that is to, is to delineate our human experience as from the divine without, right? So, you know, so you've got everybody running around screaming, you know, well, the Vedas are about, you know, this, this space fight, you know, but there are 10,800 Vedic poems and, you know, maybe two of them mention these and the others are all about human experience. And the Vedic uh, poetry is not just poetry with, with content, but they were mathematical, um, evocatory, um, you know, there was there was all sorts of things. There was a musical aspect to them. They were chanted. They were enchanting. They were like quadrivium bass. Well, even before that, yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and you and you. But the thing is, that you ch you chant a world, just like you're always chanting a world, right? And the the media is chanting a particular world, right? Right now, and that world is concretized in people's minds mm -hmm. it's anywhere, right? And that yeah go ahead I, 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 actually we had a conversation about this this morning go ahead and finish yeah, and i'm going to so talk that's about why, it so that's why you know the, the the ancient Celts, the bards they do this this chanting because this is the world that they're continue you have to keep chanting this world into existence and if you mm -hmm. don't someone else is going to chant another world for you mm -hmm. that's interesting this morning we were talking about um speaking things into reality we were talking about uh, authority and doctors and prescriptions, right? And the re like, so the, the original idea of a prescription is the meaning that uh, 
writing something down makes it so. Right. Oh, right. Prescribe. Like if you write it down, then it becomes so. So doctors will write down the prescription for or the, or the, the diagnosis and the prescription. This is your problem. This is the solution. Right. But if you don't do anything with it, if you just throw it in the garbage, then that doesn't matter. But when the person goes, I accept what you've written down and I'm going to follow your orders. It is then charged with their belief. Mm -hmm. Right. And so then they spring that reality into existence. And so like a big example would be like somebody who goes to a doctor and they're not sick, but the doctor tells them they have cancer and that they need chemotherapy and then they become sick and they become right. The, all these, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the same thing goes with all this stuff in the media. And this is why they spout bullshit all day is it long. If it really was, they want us to think that they say it. And so and that, that's what makes it so, but if that were the case, they'd only need to say it once. But the fact that they that have to keep say saying it is, yeah. is because they need people to actually believe it and start acting, follow like behaving okay. in, with those ideas in mind. Right. So they, the, Doc, uh, just like with doctor patient, all this media citizenry relationship, all is, it, it, it's really us in power, but they're playing like they're pretending like they're big and powerful. And we say it is so, so it is, but it really is. We believe what they say, and that's why it is. Very good insight. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. good insight and well, well told. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, carry on. Sorry. Well, it made me think of insurance companies. Um, totally. The only time you win is if you get sick. Mm -hmm. You only win, so you're betting that you will get sick. You're putting your money down mm -hmm. on you getting sick in order so you can win. Yep, and you're oh, having. Oh, and I'm so glad I have the insurance. Yeah. Yep. And then to what? To take their poison? <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Wise okay. to the memory. You are, Chris. <laughs> wise to them. All right. So okay. here we go. Here we go. All right. Onto the blank page. Onto the blank page. So we're going to start in the first hour. We're going to go with the quatrefoil or the fourness, as we've also yeah. called it, which is, or at least which what the eye tends to focus on is that four, what looks like four petals or four lobes, the four shape. It, there's many varieties of a quatrefoil and I'm going to show some as we go along. Mm -hmm. So we're going to focus on that fourness or the quatrefoil in the first hour. I'm just saying this for the, the listeners. And then the nine, the nine, the, the nine will be what we move on to in the second hour. So right, this right. is actually a two part drawing. Whereas in the other, episodes there's been a drawing in the first hour and then more of a discussion or something different a little in the second hour this is going to be progressive uh -huh. so um i this one was really my request like pretty much everything else we've done has been chris and steve coming to me with the thing that they want to talk about and i am particularly obsessed with this quatrefoil or four lobe shape um just because of the way it's been revealing itself to, to me over the past several years. And so as Chris draws and explains what she's doing in, mm -hmm. in the, the down moments, I'm going to kind of carry us off into wacky wonderland. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. We like wacky. Oh, and here's a book for you. Yes. Quadrivium. Quadrivium. Which is also another way of saying four. Fourness. Exactly. Right? The quadrifoil. Quad. Yeah, quad. it's funny. Yeah, the quad. I just like quadrifoil. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Quadrifoil. Sounds like driving four boats at once. So <laughs> we'll begin by doing a horizon line. Okay, we'll do the horizon line and then just nuts and bolts. I like to remind everybody that these rulers are great but that have cork on the bottom so they don't slide around your page. And this is a nice flexible stainless steel. And to show how devoted we are, we've splurged for, an, for a new stronger <laughs> stand. We've splurged for a new easel. And uh, <laughs> you can just use pencil for this this is not something that you really want to show up yeah. on your drawing. This is gonna be a little busy, but- oh, well, um, I, can't, I can't see it. Hold on a minute. Right. Well, it's good enough. This is another thing is that you can't find good dark pencils anymore. Right, right. You know, mm -hmm. the number two pencils are not like the number two pencils when I filled in my- Every, Everything is like hard to find like the kind oh, you used to. Oh, what is that? Don't Hold on. Started okay. You good? What was that? What was that noise? What uh, noise? Nothing here. Oh, we just had some interesting. Sounded like somebody turned the the fan on or the radiator on or something. It's gone now. 
Yeah, okay. So we're gonna draw a circle from near the center uh, about a third of the page. So this is our starting circle. So we have our unity to emerge from. And then Chris is going to mark points A and B where- I'm just gonna also mark- O in the middle. O in the middle? Yeah, O, o, o in the middle. And then A, no. Yeah, A to the left, a B to, to the, the left. right. All right, I was gonna do that in red. I'm gonna do all my alphabets in red. Okay, so how I kind of came to this uh, sort of obsession with this quatrefoil or the four lobe shape or whatever was, you know, when I started having psychedelic visions, it started off pretty simple, simple geometric forms, mandalas. They got much more um, uh, complicated and complex as time went on. And eventually that got so complex that I was looking at like what I would term to be like the various um, rooms in hyperspace, right? Like if hyperspace was a large mansion, mm -hmm. like I was being shown the design and the, the architecture of the various rooms within the mansion. But there was something that the whole thing in the background, just like you had to kind of pay close attention sometimes to see. Other times it would be sort of right in your face, but it was made up of something. Mm -hmm. And... In the beginning, I, uh, because all of the sacred geometry I had been shown had been based more off of the flower of life or the, the flower of creation or even the seed or something like that, I thought that that was what I was seeing and I was bedazzled by colors and other things and so not paying so much close attention to like the basic makeup of, of, the, of, of the wallpaper in the background that everything was being projected on. And, um, as time went on, I started to realize that it, it wasn't. It was something a little different, but I didn't know what it was because that wasn't one of the shapes that showed up in, when you research sacred geometry, mm -hmm. right? So, or at least not in the basic studies of it. So, I realize, so I, I'm seeing it, but I have no name for it, so I'm still sort of referring to it as the flower of life. <laughs> and then a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago now, we had um, Aurora, the flying rainbow lasagna on the show. Oh, right. oh, right. And she's uh, her information is a mixed bag in my opinion, but uh, some of it is is quite brilliant. Others, I think, I, it just doesn't work for me at all. Um, but her art, she is also an artist, and her art is all based on the quatre, one one iteration of the quatrefoil, the four lobe shape at a certain angle, and everything kind of comes off of that. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, I'm like, that is what I'm looking at when I'm having these visions of hyperspace. I've never seen it put out in the real world in life that looks right. exactly like it, but that's what's in the background. Let me go get. Well, don't we have it in there? What's that? Spaghetti oh yeah, yeah, we do have it. Well, I don't. I don't mean. I don't mean the little flying rainbow lasagna. No, okay. that, to me, that's one of the things that I don't a hundred percent get. I get it on a certain level. Like I get the wave particle weight, you know, all that kind of thing. I get that, but that isn't the thing that I see. The thing that I see is what her paintings is based on, which is this quatrefoil. And right. I was like, that is it. And so I was, you know, very attracted to her material. Some of it worked for me, some of it wasn't. It took me a while to sort of filter through and understand. And, and you know, people get different things from it. And that's the beauty of, of people being able to present their own work and their take on it and whatnot, as each of us can organize our own, you know, system of how these things operate for us. But I became very aware of that shape then and began noticing it everywhere, including in things like cinder blocks and tissue boxes and right. the, the, pa the pattern that something is sewn on your quilt and things like that. Right. I started noticing it everywhere. And then it almost began to like stalk me, right? Like literally everywhere I go, every hotel room I stay at, every Airbnb, wow. every restaurant I eat in, there is something with the claustrofoil. And yeah. I don't know if it was, or a foreness or a four lobe shape. She, Aurora refers to it as the four lobe shape. So that was my first title for it. But the claustrofoil apparently is the technical name. It's also, um, the flower of, it's also the flower of the elements. The flower of the elements. That's very, okay. So that's interesting. So that was kind of how I became, um, 
kind of fixated on, on this shape and all of the things that can sort of spring from it. And I was viewing it in one very particular way. So with that kind of story in mind, let's start drawing. And okay. as we go, I will. And, and what I'm, what's coming to my mind is that, remember that all these geometries are living geometries. They're all alive. So yeah. when you're saying that this was stalking you or this was following you around, this was, there's something going on there that it's presenting Itself. I don't know if it was always there and I didn't notice, or, right. right? Or right. if it's there because if it, it wasn't that's there right. and now that I'm looking for it, it, that's, it doesn't matter. It, 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 this is part of, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But, but it, these things are living and our entire, uh, our entire universe, our personal universe mm -hmm. is made up of them. Yes. Right? And yes. in yoga they say that the universe is not it's not the universe out there separate from you. It's the universe of your experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the yogis or the yoginis ex universe is their entire sensorium. Yeah. And that's why in chapter 11, when Arjuna has that experience of unity, mm -hmm. he's just completely gone. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. You it's like the kaleidoscope function. around your own. Yeah. And you can't function in yeah, that yeah. state. No. You have to come back. And then at the end, he says, to Krishna, return to your four-armed form. Yeah. Meaning, please return to the four boxy, you know, elements and directions mm -hmm. that so I can orient myself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We could go on. Right. Um, uh, forever. Yeah. We could never draw and just talk about forever. the drawing all day without ever right. getting 40, to the drawing. Okay. 45 minutes later, <laughs> here's the circle. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. All right, okay. so from point A and point B, but from point A, keeping the same, keeping this, the same width. Is this when I'm going to do the uh, light? The lighter. Right. Okay. So, so I have a fine tip for this. Um, for the more drawing one. So from, all right, I need to get the same radius. Let me open my compass and make sure they're accurate. And we don't need any extenders on this one, which is nice. And I hope these haven't run out of ink. Okay, so, okay, from, so a, from point A, you're going to draw an arc from the circle just across a little bit. Okay. And okay. the pens have not, dried up. Not that pen. Okay, that's all right. Uh, let me just get them. We have more pens. We have more pens. <laughs> Why don't you guys? So while she's finding another pen, sure. I'm going to screen share here some information about the quatrefoil. How does that sound? Let's do that. So we're going to go here. Okay. Can everybody, can you see what I'm sharing, Steve? Yep. Okay. So quatrefoil, the, the term means an ornamental design of four lobes or leaves as used in architectural tracery resembling a flower or a four leaf clover. Okay, so that's the technical, the technical definition of that. Um, I like that that refers to architecture in there because this is a huge component of masonry, which we're going to get into. Yeah. Um, yep. But we're going to go to the, now, this, when you look up, this is what they mostly tell you a quatrefoil is, right? And you see this a lot. We see this on, you know, buildings as the little ornate flower patterns. We see it on wallpapers. We see it on tissue boxes. Many of these. The, the, the version that I, I think is the um, operant one for the <laughs> kind of metaphysics or hyperspace I'm talking about is this more four leaf, right? That's four lobe one draw. here, which is what they're drawing. There's right. another picture of it further down here. Let me see. Uh, okay. There's various ways you can do it though. You see, there's four here, and it always creates this other box on the inverse of it. I see a lot of them like that. Here is this the way it's just four circles coming together and then there's that four lobe shape that is the main what I, the, the one that most obviously presents itself to me when I'm looking in the hyperspace of the metaphysical realm. Um, there was one more down here I saw that was kind of a good here right here. This is a good right and that's and that we can get into later. So and that's the pattern that the that the, the Masons uh, sigils come out. Yes. Yes. And so this is the one that my mind in really locked onto in terms of, rep of identifying these four lobes here and mm -hmm. then also these four points on the inside here but it was many years before what it really was revealed itself to me and we'll get to that a little bit later in the show and I'll go into the story about that so now let's catch up with Chris I'm going to end the screen Chris. share here what's Chris doing 
Nothing. Because it's, <laughs> it's got, got a pen. So we've drawn two arcs up here. Hopefully that one is long enough. Okay. And then you're going to mm. mark. You're going to mark those points where they cross the main circle, C and D. Okay, starting here. Mm-hmm. Look. Yeah, no, no, C and D. Okay. Sorry, I pointed. Okay. Now you're going to do this um, same thing, and you're going to do the same, you did the same thing below. Okay. Now we're not going to mark these points um, because they're, they're slightly irrelevant to the drawing, but um, okay, so. Get this all the way. So now you're going to go from using the same radius. Okay. Okay. Same radius. And you're going to cut the uh, the arcs that you just drew from C and from D and then also on the bottom. So I don't know if that arc is long enough. Okay, I can correct. All right, you're doing it from both sides of A and from both sides of um, okay. All right, you can do the same from D. Cut the arc that you just drew. Well, this needs to come out a little bit. So we are having trouble seeing that, that like, uh, what in, in the. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, in the one, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, in the one that you showed me that's already completed, like I can see all the lines, but I can see the dots in this, but I'm not, I'm having a trouble seeing the lines, so I'm assuming that everyone else will as well. Okay, do you want me to strengthen them? Well, we can then just use the bigger, just use the, <clears throat> all right. just use the thicker marker. Um, so basically, we've done an arc and an arc, and then there we go. Now it's way better. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. We're a little slow on the. Uh... Yeah, that's all right. We're trying <laughs> slow to on the go happy. today. We're trying to get little, little. You know, just there's like a lot of lines in the drawing, so we want to be able to bring out, you know, what we yeah. want to bring out. And we want but this to be is able fun. to see. But this is fine, and plus we can. Now this is great. Now I can really see it. Okay. All right. Well, that's important. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now. Um, it looks like uh, the Chanel almost, almost symbol, right? The right. symbol oh, for no, Chanel. Where I get all huh. this stuff from. So that's this right. this is going to be E, and then F, where you made those crossing points. <laughs> now what you're going to do is from E and C. Find a crossing point. In other words, you can find the midpoint here. Okay. So you're going to again use the same radius and cross between E and C and also between um, D and F. So I'm going to aim for getting. That's one of the tricks. Midway. You know, when you think, you know, because you have to sort of approximate where midway is, and it's really a lot harder than it looks. Yeah. Actually catch same it. Down here. No. No. Just do the top. Yeah, I may think I'm getting the middle, and if I'm lucky, I will, but. Well, especially uh, if you're standing yeah. to one side and doing the drawing, and then, everything's yeah. off. And then you're gonna do the same, make a cross up on the bottom from these two points, right? Sorry, so right. I said not to. That's okay. Emily won't hold it against you. Make sure you get your point in good so it doesn't slide. Yeah. And then when you want, if you have, like now, if you have to go back to it, you can find it again. You can find where the impression is if you make it deep enough.
Okay. All right. And so the points that you did on top, we're not going to name these points on the bottom, are going to be G to the left and H to the right. Okay. Where are we going? From this one, it's going to be G, G. and that's going to be H. Okay. Now you're going to put the ruler on from G through A to the point on the bottom. Okay. That. that in blue. This is oh, is again, this is, you don't even know what you're doing is you're just going to notch the points. There's, it's a construction line, but you don't need it. You just need to hit. Oh, okay. where it crosses these arcs. Oh, okay. So, so okay. basically we've bisected these arcs and it's also going to be tangent to point A. Okay. Now because I'm working with a marker, I have to allow for the thickness of the marker, otherwise I'll be off. So you just want to mark where it crosses there to make a new points. And then do that from H to B to the bottom on the other side. It's always good to have three points to line up. Mm. You know, it's a little more. Well, if it's a little off, you can figure out how to fudge it too. Right. Not there, oh. but we're crossing the, the arc. Okay. okay. All right. So, so, the, on, uh, so this is going to be J. So we're flying through the alphabet here. Yeah. To the right is going to be K. Um, speaking of alphabets, L, speaking of alphabet, yeah. sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, L and then M. Yeah, we, we go clockwise. Yeah. Usually go clockwise with the letters. Speaking so, of alphabets, did you hear that um, Kazakhstan is giving itself a new alphabet? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so for those of you who, so I guess that was in the Patreon group chat, we talked a lot about Kazakhstan at one time and how it really is an unusual society that is reforming itself there. They, I, I didn't get a chance to watch the video yet, but I saved it, but I saw that they are giving themselves a new alphabet. So I thought that Did you get that from Aim for Truth? Uh, the channel is called Polymatter. Okay. That I saw Aim, it on. Aim for Truth just a couple of days ago. Aim with the number four, truth. Okay. And they just did a whole big story on Astana. Okay. Yeah. And Kazakhstan. Yeah. yeah. It's very it really, much worth reading. Yeah, it really okay. feels like this is this is the uh, what they're hoping to make the capital of the New World Order. Yeah. Real, you know, real interesting place. So now you're gonna do lines uh, J L and K M. So J to L and K to M. You can draw those lines in. Okay. Through O. Big X. Okay. Through O. With the marker. Mm hmm. So all with the marker. We want everybody to see. Okay. Is this going to be hard? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, doing a, doing a show on the geometry of the, the, the buildings of Kazakhstan would be kind of mind blowing. But I think oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. Just, you could just do a show where you just showed people the pictures and talked about it. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's just, it, it doesn't, it's otherworldly, both from a well, geometry, right and, desi geometry yeah. and design perspective, but also the colors. Well, and the history of oil there, and it's real interesting. But yeah, we're, we're considering our next show with, uh, with, with Robert. Ah. Is, is just delving into Kazakhstan. Yeah. It's going to be... Right. A line. Okay. Yeah, just draw the X in. Um, there's a really good book called The Oil and the Glory by Stephen Levine. Uh-huh. You got it, L. That talks about the whole history of the oil industry in Kazakhstan. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, let's see. K to M, very good. I'm doing this in blue. Now, what this is going to... So now you've, as I said, there are simpler ways of doing this, but we're doing this because in the end you're doing this, not making a nine, uh, a nine box. Right. So, it, so, that, so now you've got the four points that the quatrefoil circles are going to come from. So um, the top, this one is going to be 
um, N, left off at M, right? N, T, Q, and R. So where they crossed the original circle. It's so interesting how different it, when you just look at the design on paper, the way you might think you draw it, based uh, the difference between that and how you really draw it, the grid you have to set up to really get that accuracy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right? It's kind of like there's what you think is going on and there's what's really going on and they're never the same thing. Oh, man. When you, when you do, and, and God knows, if we get to like show 29, we'll, um, <laughs> we'll, do, the, uh, we'll do the Islamic tile drawings. Oh. And well, those will just, the you know, one this that, kind of stuff. The one that Steve's wearing. And that's just, yeah. like, and that's, that's, that's just, that's just mind blowing. That we takes get to yeah. All right. So now you're going to draw circles from those points, N, P, Q, and R. But so this is, it. there's a, a very important point here and that these are the things that the, our universes, our multiple universes, each one of us have our own and our collective reality are made up of. And what we see looks very different than what the structure or the construct is behind that's holding it up, right? And people would be wise to keep that in mind when they think, when they're looking at the reality that is presented to them, but not looking behind the curtain. Right, right. And I would just say, you know, after we, you know, did some deep study with it, you know, you don't see things, you see things made up of the patterns within them. So well, yeah, I mean, as I'm sitting here and you guys are drawing on the background of my computer, I still have that, um, this, this design sitting there that we showed just a second ago and I was sharing, I'll share again for right now. Uh, what is going on? Why is that there? Um, this one here, I'm, I'm sorry, my, my, I don't like when it does this. Why can't I? There we go. This design right here, right? Like this pattern that I have that's big in the right hand side, this seamless abstract geometric quadrifoil, right? So as I'm looking at this and I'm understanding and I'm thinking back to the visuals behind my closed eyes, like that's what everything is made of. But there's these amazingly complex and intricate and futuristic looking structures that are, I would use the term superimposed, but really outgrowths of, of that pattern, right? They're made up of that. Right, and so we're keeping in mind that when we think about the kind of um, buildings that we're now looking at when people are talking about Tartaria and we're talking about masonry and whatever, right? That we get these very ornate, complex looking structures, but they're all made up of some of these simple patterns that people very don't simple. understand. And it's all repetition. Yeah, and, but people aren't aware of them, so they don't understand what reality is built on. Right. So the last time we were with Robert, we were talking about pattern recognition and how very important that mm -hmm. is. And, you know, I learned about that when I took my um, permaculture design course and they were talking about pattern recognition. Mm -hmm. For Alexander's book, A Pattern Language, mm -hmm. it's a very good, hand it's a workbook, it's a handbook. Well, I think that's also like the biggest thing, you know, people who've been involved in projects and programs or even people who are your standard kind of um, intelligence agents and assets and things like that, they tend to have um, a, get, a natural gift for, for pattern recognition, and it's also what is extensively pushed, although not in a forward, in, like everything that they're being trained with is a lesson in pattern recognition, even though yeah. that's not necessarily yeah. what it looks like up front. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, as you can see, we've got, we've arrived at the quadrifoil. So, this is going to be S at the points of the petals. Top one's going to be S. Bottom one's going to be T. Um, left one is going to be V. This is going to be U. That's going to be U. So they're drawing the quattro, uh, Chris is drawing the quatrefoil so that the petals are vertical and horizontal. Yeah. So at this point you can, yeah, we can, you can do a little drawing in to sort of highlight yeah. what we've got here. All right. So I'm so, just going to give this a little highlight of red. And then, and then maybe we can do another call. So, and of course, so everything, and this is the secret of also of understanding the patterns of Turkish carpets is is this negative and positive space right? mm -hmm. so the petals let's just say you just pick one is is, is the positive space yeah and then the templar cross or the um what's it also called you know the uh, is is the, uh, is the is the negative space right. so, the maltese the maltese the maltese cross, cross which is also a gymnasium 
which is also a gymnastics move on the rings for the men. Oh, really? A Maltese right, so. cross. Gymnastics is an extremely Masonic sport. Um, oh. But if you, okay, so now since Steve just explained positive space and negative space, this might be a, a good time for me to launch off into my next pocket universe. Um, <laughs> go. Go. So Chris is drawing, Chris is drawing the quatrefoil vertically and horizontally. When I, the ones that I've shown and the way I see it, my visions, it's angled slightly differently so that the uh, flower, the petals are more at the diagonals. Mm -hmm. So I've been fixated on this. I understood, I've understood for a long time. I've had it turn up enough that there is something about these are sort of portals or pocketing pockets. I had a psychedelic experience where things were moving through the dome above us through this kind of shape. They act as some sort of opening to a greater reality or, or portal to hyperspace or an endless kind of existence or something like that. Right. But I knew that there was some reason why, like, we don't know this, right? And, and one of the things that, like, the controllers are great at is disguising freedom in tyranny and vice versa, right? Or, like, make, you know, making your, you think you're free while you're in your jail cell or convincing you that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the thing that you think would be freedom, which really would be freedom, would actually be a prison. They're good at all this sort of inversing of reality, right? Mm -hmm. But I couldn't quite... Like, I knew there was something there. I knew what I was playing with. Uh, earlier in the summer, I had to get a new, um, I, I had to get a new modem. And when I got the new modem from the Time Warner, let me see if I can pull this up really fast. When I got the new modem from Time Warner, it had that all over it. Let's see if I'm gonna be able to do this or I might not be able to, where is it? There's my, let me find my, you know, there, uh, it, it was completely had those on it, right? And, and I had an experience earlier in the spring in Costa Rica where there isn't a lot of Wi-Fi, where uh, I could see that reality was made up of that same pattern that we're talking about, right? I, like I was just, every time I closed my eyes, I would see it like blaring in my face. I didn't have this interrupting frequency from technology, right? right. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Let me just pull up here. All right, so let me see if I can open this in a way that you guys can see. I took a picture of my my modem and my, what's the other thing? It's a modem and a, what's the other box they give you? They give you two of them. I can't think of the name of it. But I'm gonna screen share right now and show you guys that these are the two boxes I have that come from Spectrum. And they are right here, right? So they have this four lobe shape oh, on them. Better. Right, right, right. right? Wow. And so to me, that was a confirmation that this Wi-Fi signal and these energies that they're beaming us are blocking that or recreating that in a false sense or something, right? Wow. So I, right. I had that awareness. And then uh, when we went to Robert's thing, when we had got together for our, for our conference and afterwards, I went to... Um, Everything is relocating on me, and I'm having trouble finding where I put stuff. Um, we went to Austin, and I was in a, we had been, you know, driving around, checking stuff out. We uh, were in a, a bookstore there called Book People, which is a kind of a unique bookstore that they have there in Austin. Let me see if I can pull up what I just found. Where did it go? I don't know why I can't find anything. This is kind of annoying. Everything is disappearing on me. Oh. Hold on a second. Let me see I if I can. I love reading your mail. Uh, uh, what is happening? <laughs> Oh yeah, you guys are all looking at my emails. I should probably stop the share. You guys are pro should probably stop the share while I while I look for this. Hold on a second. This is. Let me just see Seven if I can. Coffee shop, uh, Los Angeles. Nice. Uh, ew, ew. All right. Let me see if I. This is crazy. I just sent it to myself earlier today, and I can't find it. This is really weird. Okay. Well, well while you're doing that, yeah. I'm Keep drawing, Chris. Let me look. Comment. I just got a comment on the fact that because we call, we did call this it's the flower of the elements, so the elements are the four, you know the four elements are there far and water within the concept of space. Um, oh, you sent it to me. Okay. Are the uh, you know there are they are foundational, and they are our three D world. Okay. So if they're if so they're so it's not surprising to find that they're using you know, using it or imbe embedding it into frequencies. Okay, so that, yes, so absolutely. Yes, I found what I'm looking for. So let's go back to share, that I, now that I've shared it with everybody in my email list, but okay, uh, here we go. So this is what, 
I saw. So I was in the bookstore and oh, right, right. at an angle, I was looking at it from an angle and I said, oh, there's the four lobe shape. And then when I turned head on, I'm like, oh my God, it's the Templar cross. That's right. Right? They were selling this flask in there from the side. I just saw the flower. And when I looked at it head on, I'm like, it's the Templar cross. Of course it is. Right. right, right. And I immediately, I was like, that is so we're like, you know, we're looking like, if you look at it one way, it's everything of creation. And if you look at it the other way, it's like the thing that, it, that is boxing us in, right? right. The thing right. that is, that is imprisoning us, right? Now, notice they don't quite meet in the corners. So with the, you know, there's kind of like an escape route, right? Like a little portal. <laughs> but, oh, you yeah. know, you know, it's like, I'd had this experience earlier in the summer with something with the pair, some tile I had where the guy who was installing it was insisting he saw flowers and I'm looking at cubes of geometry, but it's all in sort of how you see it. But the thing is we don't see the way that they're used against us. And in all of these artistic depictions that we see, it really, the thing that comes forward is the, the four lobe, the, flo the, the, the leaf, right? And it's a perfect place to embed the Templar cross. And then I remembered something, right? So, Okay, now let me see if I can rearrange my, you guys carry on again while I try and go off and find something else. Well, All right. If you see our thing, we've, we've kind of recreated that, though it's a little shorter here, but it's, but it's, it's, it's basically well, the same thing as you just put up. Yeah, when I- I mean, you could have made it longer or whatever to, make, to bring out this aspect of it, but it's the positive and negative space of the shape all within the circle. Yeah. And, and what I'd like to point out is if I did this, you can see this as a vortex, as a funnel. Oh, yeah. So when you were talking, and then I'm just, that's not in the drawing, I'm just putting that in there. Mm -hmm. You can see that when you're talking about this as a portal. Yeah. And if you're going to do a jump room. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jump from point yeah. Q to point N. There you go. Yeah. Right. Very good. Oh. Right. Yes. And then they also describe the chakras in this way. Right. That the yeah. chakras are vortices. They're wheels. They're 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 discs spinning on tethers. So here, are these lines that go through they're are like, like the discs, pools. But they're more like funnels. So they're more like. Yeah. They're more like. A funnel, like a vortex. yeah. No, I've seen them drawn like that, where it's like right. a funnel with the disc sort of at the and top it goes of it. Both yeah, ways. but they yeah. Go, but right. yeah, it's, it's not just the front, but the back, front and back. The sides. Yeah, I especially notice that if you, if you you know if you meditate on your third eye and the arch. Yes, then it's also like a gyroscope, which keeps I can close my eyes and see it right now. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But it, it yeah. also is like a gyroscope that keeps you oriented to time and space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your, each of your chakras. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. Right, what's next? I know somebody that, at, well, as part of their Jesuit education, ended up with a marking or a branding on them that looks like a gyroscope. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say any more than that here, but I just thought of that when you said that. Okay. So then the next thing I thought about after this realization about the Templar's Cross was a video I had seen a couple years earlier. And I actually feel like it was also something Tracy Twyman had talked about. And she, kept, she, I mean, she got herself in trouble so many ways. It's a miracle she was with us as long as she was, right? But he, I, I feel like I first heard about this from her and went looking for it. So I was able to find this video that I'd seen a couple of years ago, and it all makes sense now. So I'm not going to play the video. I'm just going to show you the screen. That's all you need to see. That is the, cre that is the first image of a light particle or a light photon. Ooh. Right. Look at that. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Right? So, so thing, that's okay. huh. right. And that's, you know, and that's right out of, uh, of chymatics. Right. That's right out of chymatics and so reality. Right. And, and if you think about it, like that is, that is a light particle or a photon. Right. And this was the first time they had actually cap captured the image of it coming into its sort of existence. And that is what all of the outpictured reality is made up of is these light photons and particles. Right. 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 One of the most um, amazing things in, in um, for me in, uh, in in Islamic art, you know, these these intricate doorways with where um, oh. where it looks like stalactites are coming down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Now that for them is the depiction of light coming into matter. 
mm -hmm. that they are depicting in them. And I find it astounding that they used stone, the heaviest right. and densest of all materials to depict light, the lightest. And but, more, I mean, you know, they're you know, just, it's just amazing. I mean, just, you know, they're, they're so denegraded, you know, by everybody, but you know, they're, their art, especially, you oh, know, from 800 just... to 1,000 years ago is, is so, beyond anything. So think about it also, though. We see this a lot in these big Masonic buildings or these churches, these ornate churches. We see these heavy stones, but then we see these windows, these large windows that sometimes are stained glass or sometimes are on the roof of the cathedral with all of this light coming in. Yes, yes. Right. right? And, and, that, and, and, you know, and back to the Templars, that's who brought that here. Yeah, that's the Templars who spent time in the Middle East during the Crusades, and they're the ones, especially, that brought into cathedrals in France. So, so as she's drawing this, you'll notice that, uh, like, there's okay. So we have the main four petals, and then she drew where the the vortex was and whatnot. But there's these secondary petals on the outside there, these smaller petals, right? And if anybody has ever looked at the art of Alex Gray, it's made up of all of these eyes. Those are the spots where the yeah. eyes are in the yeah. geometry of everything that he yeah. does. And I've had that experience, too, in the closed-eyed psychedelic space where everything has eyes on it. And that's the angle. You uh -huh. know. So think of how much is embedded in this one right. shape. Simple. Right, Simple. Right. How much stuff is in the, the, the positive space, but really even more how much stuff is in the negative space. Right. And I, I'll say this, we met, we, we were one of the times we were studying with Keith Critchell, Alex Gray came, and um, he's, he's like the, the uh, he's just a New York mensch, he's like a, the sweetest guy, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, just, very, just, very just, just, to, just to say, he's lovely really great. person. He's, he's an interesting, he's an interesting guy, because, I, you know, obviously I don't know him, I've been an admirer of his art for a long time, and I can say that his art is truth because I've seen all of those things on the back of my eyelid before I ever saw his his art, mm -hmm. right? And, and I use that when I'm, go sometimes I'll use that when I'm going to try and find, oh, I saw something, I wanna see something that looks like it, I'll go look up some of the Alex Gray stuff and that's kind of similar. You know, and I've heard him interviewed on like Joe Rogan and stuff like that with his wife and, you know, he seems like a nice guy. There's a lot of people that believe he's into a lot of weird, dark, crazy shit and that he's really on the other side and, you know, like, I can see that possibility in that aspect too, but it's really like that with everything that's of ever any importance is that, you know, like it's a mixed bag and nobody's perfect. And you know, like the same people that bring you lots of truth also bring you lots of BS. And so yeah. I think, you know, but I think that goes for everything of any kind of, that means anything. Well, you look, yes. look, you know, you know, you know, it's, I mean, everyone goes through what they go through and, you know, there was a time in college where I, I, started reading, you know, Alistair Crowley. Uh -huh. because, you know, it's, it seemed really interesting. And then such unbelievable dark things started happening to me that I, I just uh -huh. threw the books out. Yeah. You know, and I just said, all right, this is not where I'm going, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other people continue to be fascinated. Yeah. That. You yeah, know? and there is, and there's an attraction. You know, the the devil doesn't, uh, you know, devil's in some ugly horned figure. The devil is like a good looking guy. You know? Yeah, <laughs> no it's, messing around. Devil's it's true. You know? it's, isn't that the point? Isn't there a show called Lucifer that's yeah. about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah where, they, where he's like, a, yeah, it's like his buddy. It's a, it's bizarre. It's all like one or two. Like mm -hmm. I've crime, never seen it. It's like a buddy crime thing between him and this. This, you know, whatever, police, woman, chief, chief, yeah. you know. Um, All right, so I'm going to open up from O, which is the center, to okay. M. The link and the pedal. This is when it's very helpful to have had a good imprint of your point. So I can't really see because there's so much going on here, but I can feel where mm -hmm. center is, okay? And then from there, I will open up to S. Right, so you're opening up that compass, and then what we're going to do is we're going to make a um, a square around the petals. So what you're going to do is you're going to, now you're going to take that point, move it to S, and then swing arcs from each of the points, S, T, U, and V here on the other side. On um, this? Yeah, is it going to be on the circle? No, it's, yes, it's going to be on the circle. Yeah, so where it meets the circle, you're okay. going to hit that point. 
And then you're going to do it on the other side. Steve, also to your point about negative space and positive space, where I first started experiencing these kinds of visuals was listening to techno music, right? At parties, I close my eyes, I dance. Right. And techno music, particularly certain kinds of techno that is termed minimal, is not only about the sounds, but really mostly about the space between the sounds, which I think would be the same thing as in the drawing, the positive space yeah. and the negative space. Mm -hmm. base. Is that correct? So the trend I got kind of caught up in the drawing for a second. Go ahead, say. Okay. So when I first started seeing these things yeah. would be when I was listening to yeah. techno music, right? And at this time, the, the sound that was very popular was a style of techno yeah. called... Mi so you get across here. Go ahead. Hold that thought. Okay. Please. Just, Thank you. I, Please. I thought I was filling time, but I, get, I, I, I got my time yeah, wrong. Sorry. I understand, you know, and, and you can take that too to... What am I doing? Please. From V, yeah, you're notching up and down from V. You guys, this is perfect example of the patriarchy. Just look at him telling her what to do and her just doing what she says. As you can, there, there are... He's mansplaining. You should, you should see. <laughs> He's mansplaining <laughs> geometry to her. <laughs> That's all right. She, uh, she, she explains things to me in the garden all the time. <laughs> all right. So we're do what we're doing here is we're creating a square around the petals. Yeah, and you know, and the other thing, of course, and then, and then depending on the music, because since music became digital, you know, and not analog, there are spaces in the music. There are spaces in the numbers yeah. that, that have to be filled in, negative spaces that have to be filled in by our minds. Yeah, so what I was saying was that at the time when I first, when my Let visuals me. advanced to what I would term to be a, a different level where I started seeing this shape as opposed to some more, you know, some things I've been seeing before, it was a time when a style of techno called minimal was very popular which wasn't my favorite style of techno. I like a more full, full-bodied kind of sound, but it was instructional. I'm glad it happened because it was instructional to the visual space for me. And the minimal music is not as much about the sounds you're hearing as it is about the ones you're not. It's about the space between the sounds and the stripping out of e everything but the quote unquote necessary sound, right? Right. right. So it, 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 I think it's kind of, it kind of goes to the same thing as the positive space and the negative space. And then this, this theory was also explained to me by some, I was taking a meditation class and the teacher of the meditation course, if you are having trouble sort of, you know, emptying your mind or focusing on nothing or whatever, he said something about if you hear like a, a dog barking off in the distance and that's distracting you, instead of focusing on the dog barking, focus on the space between the times the dog barks. Oh, that's a good one. Right? right. So like the space yeah. between oh, the sounds. For you. Yeah. Our yoga teacher one time said in class, snow falls from where the dog barks. Oh, interesting. Oh, I didn't think about that, honey. <laughs> huh. So Sonia told me, Sonia relayed a story to me one time that was, it, it, she, so we've talked about it a couple of times, but that she recognized that the dogs barking in the morning were like the cue for the simulation to come on because it kind of happened every day at the oh, same yeah. sort of time. And her simulation would come, the one that she exists in would kind of come online with the, you know, the timed barking of these dogs. So that kind of goes to the same sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's all coming from the unmanifest into the manifest. Yeah. So, um, just what we're doing here. So we've labeled points W X Y Z. So we've actually used the w, complete alphabet. X Y Z. At these points, so we're making a square around the quatrefoil. And actually, oh, as I say, connect the dots. And actually, you, you can go into any high-end tile shop now and see tiles the big, with the big square that have all of these sort of designs in them. It's a very popular look these days for backsplashes and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. So Chris right. has just drawn us a trendy tile here. There we go. And um, yeah. So, all right. Looks like those tiles, doesn't it? <laughs> um, all right. So now we're going to draw a couple of lines in. Um, Start so to look draw like the square. Something. Okay, are, are, are we done with the four now and the next part would be moving into the nine? 
Is yeah, this a good right. thing from the four? And we're also, yeah, and th these actual next lines will show you a little bit something, but you can tell me where we are time-wise. So we're I think we ju we're up. just over an hour now. So if we're about to move oh. from four to nine, let's, uh, let's pull the plug on the first hour here. I think, yes. Is this a good time to do it? Yeah. I, I, oh, don't fine. we have to do the lines? We do can the get, grid? We can get, yeah, we'll get that in next then, I guess. We're just going to. No, no, we, we can keep going. I'm just trying to make, I'm trying to know from you. Let, let's, let's do we have a little more to do on the drawing. I think we should. Then do it. Then right. do it. Let's go. Yeah. All right. So you're going to want, so these are also lines of force. So you're going to run these from S to Z, S to Y. Okay. And they give you Let's... all these, you're going to do these half diagonals. All right. Now what this is going to, what this is going to show you is how the, how the Masonic grid gets in here. Okay, and I'm going to pull up while you're while we're doing this. I'm going to see if I can pull up the email that you sent me with some of this. Let's see. Let's go back here to the inbox. Uh, let's go to Kristen yeah. Steve. You guys sent me one that you said you didn't know how to get into a PDF. So I'm going to see if I can just pull that right up from my. It's okay mine. to go through the colors, but I'm, you'll notice I'm always avoiding drawing anything through the letters. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So I think, okay, I found what you're, I think this is what you're talking about, Steve. So you'll let me know when I show it. This is what I'm, let's see. And you can talk about this a little bit. Is this what you're talking about? Well, this is, yeah, this, so this is kind of what we're heading into, but um, yeah, and this is also the magic square. So when we get to the nine, we can um, talk about that as the magic square. I don't know if you have the one with the, um, what else? with the sigils. So I've got, but that's this is part of it. Yeah, so you're doing all all along. The, is this the ones you're talking about? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I see the sigils. Hold on, I have it right here. Hold on. What's next? Okay. So we did S to Y and S to Z. Now you're gonna go from all the midpoints of the pedals. Well, to let's the just say one at a time for the, so, for the audience. All right, so v, v to X. to X and then V to Y. Is this what you're talking about, Steve? Yeah. So what let me go. Let me go back to what she just said real fast, and then we'll come back to this because I don't want people to miss on the drawing. Chris, yeah. can you repeat what you just said? Right. So we just did S to Y and S to Z. Now we're going to do V to X and V to Y. So basically, we're connecting the, the pedal points in the middle to the corners. So this is going to get you. A design that I've, uh, this is, uh, I've been seeing all over the place too with these corporate locos, which is sort of these intertwined M's kind of thing, right? And I'm seeing it all over the place. And Yes, uh, I know what you're talking especially, about. Especially, I noticed especially because um, you, you, I guess you know Amazing Polly's work and she does a lot of, you know, backgrounds of people and what, what corporations they, um, you know, belong to and adhere to and things like that. And she's always pulling up the logos and on this, together and I'm looking at it just over and over and over again it keeps on showing up all right I've heard of the I've, I've heard of amazing Polly I'm not familiar with her work oh um, god you need to know her yeah I, 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 it was it, yeah I'll have, to, I'll have to check it out there's a bunch of new ones that I haven't yeah I've been mean, really focused on my schoolwork and whatnot I haven't had a chance to check into amazing recognition and connecting the dots yeah I'll have to check it out the guy that I found interesting uh, that from several years ago who, who died shortly after he came out with all his information was a guy named Rick Clay. Okay. I don't know if you've, uh, uh, yeah, there is a uh, R-I-K-C-L-A-Y, I think is correct. And I heard him on Red Ice Radio back when it used to be informative. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, he, his, his work was amazing and he came out with all this stuff and then he seemed to, he was a very young guy. He, I think he was 19 or 20, and he was died. And there was never really much of an explanation as to why. No, no I never heard of him. Yeah. I'm going to make that stronger. All right. All right, so we're doing U to W, U to W, and, and U to Z. And we always, you know, give you the directions. Right. You'll get all that in the notes. So, so one of the things that, that uh, that I get out of this is these are particular lines of force within the, in the within the geometry, and your you know <laughs> lines to travel on I guess. And then I guess we're going to do t to x, t to x and t to w and t to w. All right, these are lines of force and lines to travel on. So yeah. I, think, I think this is my guess. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good. 
So I'm thinking about ley lines to lyric currents. I'm thinking about underground railroad ways. I'm thinking about mm -hmm. um, fiber optic cables, the way that they're run across the bottom of the ocean. Thinking about all sorts of stuff. And the, uh, yeah, and um, so how are we doing? I think I got all of Okay, and what this is also going to allow us to do is to trisect the square, in other words, to get a perfect nine box. I, I, trisect it? Okay. Yeah, in other words, you, you, trisecting is difficult. It's for the trisexuals yeah, out perfect, there. Yeah, trisect, okay. oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. It's difficult for some people. See, <laughs> geometric proof. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So right. this could, yes, this could be the new transgender symbol. <laughs> Where are we going? Uh, all right, so, so we've got that, and now we, um, so let's, we can, let's, let's finish up the drawing with my notes. I have that sigil thing that you wanted up whenever you're ready to, so you let me know when you're ready for that, Steve. Okay, let's just finish up the drawing here. I think we're almost, so, all right. um, you got all those lines in, and then on the original circle, where they cross, so you're going to put, because we've run through the alphabet, W prime, X prime, Y prime, and Z prime. So W prime goes between N and O. Right there. Okay. Within, so this is within, not on the circle, within the circle. So where these lines cross, so these are, so these are, are you know, talk about lines of force, but these are big nodal points. So you got within that cross, you've got three lines going in. So that's W prime. Yep. Yeah. X. W prime. Um, X prime. This is X prime. Right. And then underneath Y prime. I'm just, just because I colored that in. And Z um, prime. This is Y prime. And Z prime. And this is Z prime. Right. So with with these points now you can draw the final lines. That now you can make the nine box. So right. use these these points going out to the edge, and you can get this this perfect box of nine. So I'm setting up at W prime and X prime. Right. And I'm gonna take it. What about Amazon Prime? Amazon Prime. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a strike well, for that. We'll get a strike. <laughs> well, you know, this look. This could, this could be a drawing for a drone. Do you think this is why Amazon's able like to deliver so time. quickly because they 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 run their routes along lines of force and travel? Oh well, you know, <laughs> you can't discount that, Emily. <laughs> I'm just making this shit up as I go Emily's along. Emily's so good at pattern recognition. She's an natural. All right. Now top to bottom. Top to bottom. Through. Oh, okay. So then we're gonna go W prime and Z prime. Right, where all those worlds right. collide. Yeah, so and then we can get into the rest of it after the break. But yeah, I would like to get into the sigil thing because I think it's it's pretty cool. But so this is the um, so this and is the then drawing. X prime and Y prime. Right. Right there. And I've just made it easier by circling them. So we have this nine square, which is which we will, uh, I guess we can talk about it. Is the, uh, that's okay. I went too far. It will be the, okay. the it's the, 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 each planet has a magic square and Saturn's is this nine box. And the a magic square is where the numbers add up to be the same each direction. Okay. And that's on the, the other thing that, that, the other thing that you have brought up. So, so this is a drawing and then, okay. and then we'll show how that relates to the Vastu Purusha Mandala in the next part, but you okay. want to bring up the sigil so I can, because I think this is really Okay, cool. so here, Steve, this is the visual that Steve has asked for, so go ahead. So what you see, um, the drawing on the left, is, oh, right. um, is, is an extension of the quatrefoil drawing. If you kept on going out, right, it would make it bigger and bigger. 
and what um, what the uh, so these are this is going back to um, operative masonry. So this is when masons were actually masons, and they actually had to know how to cut stones and what have you. So this is really an example of of uh, each of, of the pattern that you would have to draw from. In other words, you'd have to know the background pattern, and if you were a mason, you would make up certain lines and curves from that pattern, and that would be your signature. Yeah. So on, on cornerstones of cathedrals, you'll find those kind of signatures and things like that. Yeah. And, and so that would be your, your, your signature, and that's how, you know, masons would know each, master masons would know each other. You show up at a cathedral and say, yeah, I can build that well, you know, show me that you've passed the test. So yeah. that, that works. And I just thought that was amazing that, that all these lines of force and things like that, then you, and then you pick one that goes to you. And then this person who wrote the book, Nigel Pennick, it's called Sacred, Sacred Geometry, where this book comes from, where it comes from that book. Um, he just found that all these, um, you know, early pictographs also follow. And then you can, you can also find all of the, um, um, what do you call it? The Ogun marks, the, um, the runes also all fit within this pattern. Yeah. So I just thought that was really interesting and, and, and possibly, you know, it's not something I've delved into, but, I, but you know, it just shows what's, you know, again, another thing behind it's an it. endless. It, there's an endless number of, of places you can go with this. One quick question I have on this four before we move over to the next hour and into the nine. I don't, I'm trying to figure out how to ask this question. Like we've drawn it today with the vertical and horizontal. The way I see it when I view hyperspace is slanted at the angle, so the petals on the diagonal, which is, is it, it is in this one you've shown here. Well, you could just I, turn the page around. Yeah. Turn the page around. But sometimes you see it presented one way and one the other, and I'm wondering if the angle is important to the function that's able to, like, right? Like, if you're seeing it, you know, like people tend to look at things straight mm -hmm. on, but if you look at things at an angle, you see things differently. Right. So I'm wondering if the, wherever you can go with it or the magic that can be done with it or the possibilities that arise from it are a different set based on the angle that you're viewing it at. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would guess because if, you, because if you shift the angle 45 degrees, then this, uh, the, the, um, you know, the Templar cross would also, would be oriented the way the petals are yes. now. And yes. So, and so they would be aligned to, because this is also supposed, you know, aligned to, you know, the magnetic, this would be north, south, east, and west. Yeah. Right? So right now, this is aligned along the, the, the magnetic north and south, which may or may not, I don't know, give it uh, more, more juice than, say, yep. the angle, or something else is going to be coming in on the angle. When I see visuals like all of the what I consider to be tethers or poles are very rarely up and down they're usually at an angle right and then you think uh well, someone pointed out one to me one time to me like this would be a Jewish or a Hebrew thing or a Kabbalistic thing the mezuzah that people put on their front door it's oh, at right. that same angle right it's at that certain degree angle right and that's where you know you put that on a door which is an opening to something yeah. I just didn't know if perhaps it being at the angles opens to, you know, opens reality in a different way. Like I just had, I don't even know how to ask. I don't even fully know how to ask the question I'm trying to ask. So that was sort of a messy, well, a messy attempt, but. Okay. But traditionally the, um, having things going like a cross. Yeah. Right. A cross. If this was, this was just a simple cross and that the cross is emblematic of the, of the, um, the imminent and the transcendent, right? Okay. So yeah. the transcendent line is the up and down, also sometimes called oh, okay. the, um, the, the the pole, the um, the pole of existence, or the um, yeah, the world the, tree, the, the, the world the tree sometimes, um, and then the, the 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 horizontal cross is the imminent. So this is, and of course, where this is is the heart. So our heart is is the connecting point between mm -hmm. the spiritual and the physical world. So that's, yeah. you know, basic traditional way of looking at that. And I can't, I can't come up with anything, you know, or what happens when you move things on an angle. I'm not really sure. It would, but, it would be interesting to know if anybody knows what those, if you move those poles diagonally, if their representation, what they represent, I'd be interested to hear that. Yeah. I'm guessing maybe something else comes in on those angles, but, uh, but 
you know, and then again, when we get to the, the Vastu Purusha, actually, this is where this, the spiritual angle comes from. That's what I'm the, talking about. That's, that's, that's what I mean. That's it's what I'm well, talking about. Well, yeah. according to the, 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 the Vastu Purusha mandala, this is the spirit angle. The spirit comes in this direction. Interesting. Right. So you'll see on the next drawing. Where we get the man in there. And what is it the other direction? That's the spirit line. That's the spirit line, and what is the opposite one? Well, the, the, what? Well, it's not said. I don't know. Hmm. Oh, that's the one I see the most. That's curious. Well, okay. This is, this is <laughs> north, this is northeast. Trouble, this is a troublemaker line, I think. This is northeast. <laughs> so, when, yeah. so when you set up your home, yeah. this is your entryway, and then they have the man set up. Okay, here's what we can do. For, okay, we're going to get, should, should, we, should we save this for the second hour, or should yeah, we? I think so. But I can just go back. Just for the just for quickly the, or tease to tease. No, 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 no. No, I'm just gonna say you can see that when yeah, I see the human body inside this, this is the spirit angle. Gotcha. So it comes directly in. I mean, I see, I see, chakra. I see that when as well. But for some reason, when I first see something, when I first am closing my eyes and things start to develop around it, the one that goes at the other angle is what I see first. So I'm curious as to what that would represent, but very good. Yeah. Very, very good. All right. So this wraps up the first hour and the quatrefoil or the foreness. Yeah. It was about an hour and a half, but that's okay. We, 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 you know, dilate time here at off planet radio. Um, and, before we go, I think Chris and Steve had something that they wanted to chat about real quickly. Right. Yeah. We have an Indiegogo uh, campaign to raise money for Logo Sophia Books. And our goal is $8,000. We've already raised 12, 13, 13, almost 14. Almost 1400 Okay. So, uh, Just it, started a week ago. Yeah. So, so if Emily would be so kind to put the link. We can give you the yes. link if you don't have it can yet. Can you do that? Um, yes. Uh, yeah. Find for it sure. Right on it to search. So we're, we're, we're rebooting Logo Sophia. A lot of things are getting rebooted. And one of them is so um, getting, a, we need, desperately need a website, which is now we have raised enough to have that done. Um, we have books coming in and we're just really trying to just, you know, uh, up the level of the whole thing. And we've got some really good new authors showing up. Boy, it's it's really good. So, okay, so for people who don't know, Chris and Steve are book publishers, and Logo Sophia is their is their book label. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so that's good. So all right. Okay. All right. Well, I hope everybody was able to have their seatbelts on because this was a uh, roller coaster drawing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It's actually really cool. It's only we were a little all over the place, but there was some cool, definitely some cool stuff here. It's not fun. We're not going to do it, right? Yeah. So right. join us. Move on over to patreon.com forward slash off planet media to explore the nine with us. And we'll see you next time. All righty. This is off planet radio.